We need to talk about the losses that the Russian side suffered at Vodaldar. Most often only the elite 155th Marine Brigade is mentioned, but in fact it was not the only one that was defeated there. Up to 9,000 servicemen participated in the first line, the reserve and auxiliary units in that offensive. As of today, almost all of these units, with the exception of the rear component, have lost their operational capability. And a subdivision is considered to have lost combat effectiveness when losses exceed 30% of the regular strength both in soldiers and equipment. But there is a nuance. This entire above-mentioned horde with up to 9,000 servicemen, has lost combat readiness because it has losses exceeding 50%. The only ones who escaped humiliation on the battlefield were the private military company Patriot. They were not sent to the meat grinder, but that is a separate story. Thus, very cautiously, based on the given parameters, we can say that the losses of the Russian troops at Vodaldar, according to the most conservative estimates, exceeded 5,000 liquidated, wounded and captured. Likewise, the number of occupants' equipment taken out of action is similar. At the moment, the Russian command is solving the issue of the additional staffing of the units, without withdrawing them from the combat zone. In other words, the pressure on Vodaldar will continue to bring biomass directly to the front line, which may cause another peak of losses among the invaders. There is also a lot of talk now about the offensive from the Luhansk direction and indeed certain movements are noted there, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yes, from Swatovo to Kremina the enemy has concentrated rather serious, though questionable, potential of forces and means. Also, the activity of Russian troops is noted in some parts of eastern Ukraine. But, what was this activity? And it was the withdrawal of enemy homeless groups, without artillery or even equipment fire support. It's not hard to guess that Ukrainian fighters turned to flee those who were left alive. Yes, this can be regarded as reconnaissance in combat. But a reconnaissance of combat, is an offensive, in the full sense. What prevented this reconnaissance of combat from being supported by artillery, or at least, tanks and armored fighting vehicle fire? It could at least minimize losses of these units and increase the effectiveness of the reconnaissance, but no. And all because the Russian side is now in a severe economy of equipment, so it is not being thrown at Swataway and Kremina for mundane, routine sorties. Especially after the Ukrainian fighters have recently successfully reduced the 27th tank regiment of the invaders to the size of a company. And they are saving the equipment exactly for the offensive. Or what they mean by offensive. After all, if at this stage there is a severe economy of equipment, then it is easy to see the overall picture of shortage of armored combat vehicles. And in the offensive it will be destroyed non-stop. Well, where with such a limited capacity they are going to attack. Nevertheless, the activity of separate units in the Live Meat Legion suggests that the offensive has not begun, but the preliminary sluggish stage has already been realized. And the apogee of reflection itself could start just by February 24th. This is the date on which the front is warming up.